Hi all, I'm Catherine Randalls, Manager of Research Data Services in the eResearch Centre. Our team connects researchers to technology and the community, and today I'm going to take you through the wonderland of the management of data and information in research. There is a total of four training modules. This is Module 1 Overview. In today's session, we'll be covering research data and information, specifically what it is, why is it so important, who owns it, what, where and how to keep it safe, resources and training, and where to go when you've forgotten everything I've just told you. So, to begin, let's talk about what is data and information. This may surprise you, but it's actually quite difficult to give you a definite definition. For our purposes though, we consider research data is any data that has been collected, generated or created during a research project. This data can be physical or digital, experimental or observational, qualitative or quantitative, raw or machine generated and arranged, and in any format or media. It includes blood samples, laboratory notes, field notes, questionnaires, audio recordings, video recordings, models, photographs and test responses. Some more on this later in the intellectual property section. But most importantly, what we need to remember is that it's the foundation of your research and it needs to be protected. So if research data are the raw and unprocessed facts, research information is data that has been processed and organised into a more useful format. It's also sometimes referred to as derived data. Now, it may not seem significant to you at the moment, but it's important to understand this difference as it has implications for what you actually need to keep to support your research output, your publication or your thesis. First though, we need to understand why research data and information is so important. In the short term, poor data management will slow the progress of your research project and exposes you to risks such as data loss. In the medium term, term, if the validity of your work is questioned, you need to be able to trace the route between data and conclusion. And in the long term, you may want to share your data with others so that they can potentially use and build on the data later. Increasingly, funders and journals are requiring you to make your data available and this is developing as a standard practice. So you can see that having good data management practices is really important and a big component of your research. But it also has a personal impact on you as the researcher, as it helps to maximise the efficiency and integrity of your research. It increases your visibility and impact as a researcher, and it helps you to meet any mandatory storage and sharing requirements of your research funding. Given its importance, I want to take a few moments to reinforce why we need to have good data management practices in place. First of all, I'd like to talk to you about visibility. Making your data available for citing allows people reading your work to be able to locate your sources and learn more about the ideas that you've included. Secondly, cited data can be tracked and counted. These measures can then be included in your own CVs and researcher profiles and to demonstrate the impact that your research has had in your field of study. Making your data available also helps to demonstrate the value of publicly funded research. It helps with the knowledge transfer and to communicate discoveries. As you would appreciate, research can have real life and career enhancing impacts by saving lives or protecting our environment or supporting our economy. We need to be able to share and highlight these results to encourage continued support and funding. Collaborating with others also helps researchers to deal with the data tsunami, so that includes huge growth in size, complexity and data rate. It helps us to reduce duplication and to use existing data to generate new discoveries. And again, it helps to increase your research profile and attract funding. Simply put, don't underestimate the potential of your data. As we'll soon see, data management planning can inform your entire research activity. 
For example, if your file naming practices are poor and you're not using version control, you can waste lots of time looking for things and put your data at risk. Your choice of file formats and software can affect, can affect how your data can be analysed and reused in the future. Reducing duplication of research can also reduce the burden on participants such as oversampling small populations or rare diseases. And taking time to plan the depth of your data helps you to make sure you have enough resources to cope. Although it's not something that we, we think about at the time that we're doing our research, things like documentation, version control and archiving make it possible for others to validate your results or, if necessary, to reproduce these results. And even though we don't always like to talk about it, compliance is becoming an increasingly important factor in the management of our research data and information. There are legal and funder requirements to consider, privacy protocols and ethical obligations, publisher conditions and requirements for the confirmation of candidature and thesis submissions for HDR candidates. Lastly, having safe and secure storage and backup arrangements helps protect your data. Active data, so this is also known as working data. So for these for active data, we recommend that you follow the basic rules. Don't. Do not keep the only copy of your research data on a hard drive, laptop, external drive, USB, key, you, you get the picture. But what we do recommend, strongly urge you to do, is to make three copies of your data and keep them in separate places. One on a hard drive, two an external or cloud drive, and three on a network or other storage solution supported by JCU. For example, um, Microsoft OneDrive or the HPRC. Losing your only copy of data will be highly frustrating to you and could potentially mean the end of your project or funding. Storage solutions supported by JCU are listed on the Research Data Management Toolkit under the Store Data section. It's important to note that cloud storage solutions such as Dropbox or Google Drive are unsupported by JCU, so I encourage you to review these options. Now we come to ownership. So here I will briefly touch on who owns, who owns it, who has the IP, um, and who is responsible for applying copyright licenses. So at JCU, ownership and IP differs if you are an employed staff member, so a researcher, or a HDR candidate. As a HDR candidate, JCU regards you as the owner of the IP. However, should you enter into a contractual arrangement with, um, for example, whoever funded your research, they may, as per the contract terms, specify that they will retain some or all of the copyright. As a JCU employee, JCU is the owner of the IP for the research. IP or intellectual property does not, however, include the raw data and therefore you generally don't own the research data, the raw data. You also need to be aware that although data isn't copyrightable, a representation of the derived data, such as a visualisation, a table or a graph, for example, can be copyrightable. So in research information, so the derived data, can also be licensed to limit what others can do with the data, for example, a copyright licence. It's important to note that any research information that is shared without a licence is deemed useless, as in Australia, no licence means the same as all rights reserved. A licence can make it clear what the conditions for reusing the data is and ensures that the data owner is given correct attribution. Both HDR candidates and JCU researchers are responsible for applying copyright license to publish um, research information. This is why it's especially important if you're using data from elsewhere that you're sure as to who owns the data and what you're allowed to do with it. For example, what does the license agreement say that you can do? So I just want to um, go over the example that we've got here up on the screen. This has been taken from the Australian Research Data Commons Research Data Rights Management Guide. Um, in Australia, 
despite many legal cases to the contrary prior to 2010, a raw data set generated by a data logging machine about water quality in a creek will not attract copyright protection. Even if there has been considerable expense, skill and effort in sitting the data logger that generates the data. This is primarily because there is no recognised human authorship and the originality in this type of raw data set. The lack of copyright in this instance is now very well understood at law. However, if a scientist examines the data from the data logger, notes certain errors and makes corrections to the data or reforms the selection and the arrangement of the data set, that sometimes relatively minor act of human authorship, originality and application of skill and judgment may be sufficient for the resulting data set to attract copyright protection. So it will often be a question of fact and degree on a case-by-case -case basis. I encourage you all to make sure you have a very good understanding of IP copyright and ownership of research data and information. There is more information under the copyright and licensing section in the research data management toolkit. But if you're unsure, you can always ask the supervisor, the lead investigator, or you can even send me an email for further clarification. Now that we've established the importance of your research data and information, it's easy to see it has enormous value as a strategic asset to you as the researcher and to JCU and the broader community. What, where and how we store this data is therefore an integral component of our research data management practices. By now you'll be starting to get the picture as to the amount of data you'll be collecting and storing. Now think about this across all fields of research. In fact, in the world of data management, we're now talking about data in the term of zettabytes. According to market intelligence company IDC in 2018, the global data sphere has already reached 33 zettabytes and is predicted, predicted to reach 175 zettabytes by 2025. Now, we don't have quite that much data at JCU, but how we manage our data and information is certainly a serious and costly business. To help us understand this aspect, we need to be familiar with the life cycle of our research asset. So this life cycle extends from planning your project to collecting your data, right through to storing and archiving, and continues usually long after your research project is completed. So for example, when, how, and even if your research data and information will need to be disposed of. So what research data and information does need to be stored and where? Again, I'll use the Water Creek example that I spoke of earlier in the IP section. However, you'll need to apply this understanding to your specific research areas. So if you take the um, raw physical data, in this case, that is the physical water sample, this is not required to be stored in research data JCU platform, but it may be required to be kept in your college. So I encourage you to check this with the lead investigator or your primary advisor. However, in Research Data JCU platform, you are required to store the raw digital data, this being the results generated by the data logging machine, as well as any relevant information on how you've organized and interpreted the data. So this can include data dictionary, code books, scripts, or details of software you've used um, in your workflows and computer software. And it also must include the results of your analysis and findings. So this is your research information that directly supports your research output. And all of this should be stored in line with the institutional and or funding body retention policies and any contractual agreements, which is for publications a minimum of five years. Some of the options for storing your data include Research Data JCU or the HPRC High Performance Research Computing, uh, Microsoft OneDrive, uh, Cloud Store, etc. Once again, I need to emphasize that I strongly recommend that, own, that you, only the JCU supported storage and collaboration options. And it surprises some um, people that Dropbox and Google Drive are actually unsupported options and are therefore only to be used as backups only. You also need to think about file formats when you're creating your data. 
It's important to ensure you try, where possible, to use machine-readable file types and that those will not be obsolete in five years' time, as that will mean that the files will not be able to open or be reused in the future. Now I just want to take four minutes and 40 seconds of your time um, to watch a data management and sharing YouTube clip by NYU Health Science Library. It's a little painful to watch, however, it truly does summarize the importance of data management and touches on a lot of the content that I've just discussed with you. Hello. My name is Dr. Judy Benign. I'm an oncologist at NYU School of Medicine. Hello, Dr. Judy Benign. I read your article on B cell function. I think that I could use the data for my work on pancreatic cancer. I am not an oncologist. I know, but I think I could use the data for my work on pancreatic cancer. Do you have the data? Everything you need to know is in the article. No. What I need is the data. Will you share your data? I am not sure that will be possible. But your work is in PubMed Central and was funded by NIH. That is true. And it was published in Science, which requires that you share your data. I did publish in Science. Then I am requesting your data. Can I have a copy of your data? I am not sure where my data is. But surely you saved your data. I did. I saved it on a USB drive. Where is the USB drive? It is in a box. It is in a box at home. I just moved. But can I use your data? There are many boxes. So many boxes. I forgot to label the boxes. Hello again. Thank you for sending me a copy of your data on a USB drive. I received the envelope yesterday. You are welcome, but I will need that back when you are finished. That is my only copy. I did have a question. What is your question? You might find the answer in my article. No. I received the data, but when I opened it up, it was in hexadecimal. Yes, that is right. I cannot read hexadecimal. You asked for my data and I gave it to you. I have done what you asked. But is there a way to read the hexadecimal? You will need the program that created the hexadecimal file. Yes, I will. What is the name of the program? Cytosynth. I do not know this program. It was a very good program. The company that made the program went bankrupt in 2007. Do you have a copy of the program? I do not use this program anymore because the company that made it went bankrupt. Maybe you can buy a copy on eBay. I have good news. You again? I talked to my colleague. She knew a person with a copy of the software. Then why do you need me? Everything you need to know about the data is in the article. I opened the data and I could not understand it. If you have the program, you will find it is clear. Well, I noticed that you called your data fields SAM. Is that an abbreviation? Yes, it is an abbreviation of my co-author's name. His name is Samuel Lee. We called him SAM. I see. And what is the content of the field called SAM1? Ah, yes. SAM1 is the level of CXCR4 expression. And what is the content of the field called SAM2? That is logical if you think about it. What is the content of the field called SAM2? I don't remember. What about SAM3? Is there a guide to the data anywhere? Yes, of course. It is the article that is published in Science. The article does not tell me what the field names mean. Is there any record of what these field names mean? Yes. My co-author knows what the content of SAM2 is and SAM3. And SAM4. Can I talk to your co-author? I'm not sure. I would very much like to talk to your co-author. Well, he was a graduate student. He went back to China two years ago. 
Can I have his contact information? He is in China. His name is Sam Lee. I think I cannot use your data. You could check the article to see if what you need is there. Please stop talking now. Where to now? To help you navigate this data management adventure, the university has developed a platform called Research Data JCU. This is a user-friendly system with lots of help text, questions with prompts, and links for further information. Only JCU staff and students can log into the site, which can be found at the URL on screen. It's important to note Entering data into Research Data JCU is e easier on larger screen devices, so we recommend using the system on a laptop or desktop computer rather than mobile phone or tablet. Research Data JCU comprises of three main sections and guides researchers to step one, plan, so they create a research data management plan to ensure effective project and data planning. Step two, manage. This is where you will create a data record to store and maintain your research data. And step three, um, publish and share. So here you will create a data publication to receive a DOI and share your data if appropriate. To log into the system, you need to authenticate using the Australian Access Federation login. Here you will select um, Firstly, you need to click on the orange icon, the Australian Access Federation icon. Now you need to type in James Cook University and then select it. And then you will need to click on the blue connect to your organisation icon. Um, and now you will need to enter your usual JCU number and password and ensure you agree to any terms that may appear. Next time you log in to the platform, your details should be remembered. Throughout your research project, you are required to complete the three records. It is also important to note that Research Data JCU replaced the Tropical Data Hub as at the start of 2021. So that means all projects commencing as of 2021 do require all researchers, including HDR candidates, to use Research Data JCU and to complete in full a research data management plan, a data record and a data publication. If you have an active project that commenced prior to 2021, then you are not required to retrospectively complete an, a research data management plan. However, you must complete a data record and data publication. So this slide gives you a pretty good indication as to when you should be completing each record in Research Data JCU. A research data management plan is ideally to be completed pre-project. So for HDR candidates, you are required to have your RDMP completed and reviewed by your primary advisor before your confirmation of candidature. As you progress, the RDMP is then maintained and updated to reflect changes as they occur. The RDMP is a living document and that is why the column during a project is ticked. A data record can be completed throughout your project, for example, um, when you're completing your thesis chapters or is completed at the end of your project. A data publication closely follows a data record, so once again you have the option um, either during the project or at the end. Also, you will have the option to choose an embargo period to delay the release of your data. The library at JCU has several research guides. These guides provide targeted information on a particular topic to support students and staff in that area. So we do have a research data management toolkit as our LibGuide at JCU, and this provides um, information about research data um, management and also da um, information about the research data JCU platform. All the information that you've just listened to is directly from the Research Data Management Toolkit and is the number one resource, resource that you should consult with. Where to to get more help? The Research Data Management Team is a small team spread across the eResearch Centre and Library. 
Together we provide storage and data curation services, including advice and training for HDR students and researchers, archival storage of data sets, review and publication of data and data records in Research Data JCU, where we, um, the metadata is harvested to Australia, Research Data Australia and other sites. There is also controlled access to these data sets if required. We provide min DOI minting um, to facilitate data citation and tracking and also linking to publications, project websites and related data sets to increase your visibility. Basically the three big takeaways from this training module is one, JCU has a research data management platform. It's called Research Data JCU and this is the technology to assist you. Two, the Research Data Management Toolkit, which is a library guide, is the JCU data management resource. And three, contact us via email should you have any questions. We are here to help and support you. Thank you for joining me today. If you head over to Module 2, you'll learn how to create a Research Data Management Plan in Research Data JCU.